In the book Spiral Origami Art Design by Tomoko Fuse, there is some background on how to construct tree patterns for whirlpool spirals. And the technique itself and the theory behind it is explained in the book, but you still need to construct the crease patterns. So I thought I'd show you one way, which is using Inkscape, which is a free vector graphics tool, which you can download on inkscape.org. And let's go ahead. I just opened a new document. And first off, we're just going to use guides around the page so that I can actually get rid of these borders around the page because I think they're somewhat distracting. So I'm going to deactivate show page border and show border shadow. I'm also going to go to the snap tab and always snap to objects and I want to have snapping to guides with well a bit of a discrepancy so it's not going to be an always snap and that just what works well for me. So next we're going to use this draw tool to just draw a straight line and because we have snapping to the guides we're going to stay on those lines. Then I'm actually going to select that and we're just quickly going to zoom in to that selection with three and then we're going to zoom out a bit with the minus key which I'm going to use a couple of times using plus and minus simply. So we're going to zoom out perhaps this much and now I want to create angles. So I'm actually going to be constructing a whirlpool spiral with the parameters 5, 10, 31. So I'm going to be using an angle of 31, an angle of 10 and another angle uh, which is going to be 108 degrees or 72 because that's kind of the complement of, a well, this is 180 degrees, so if you have 108 degrees in one direction, you have uh, 72 degrees in the other one. But never mind that, so, you know, the, the angles are actually given in the book. So to create that, I'm just going to quickly duplicate this line because I'm going to use a lot of duplication to always have the same angles, really. I'm not always certain whether this is a straight line, and I do want to have the exact angles. So I'm going to select it and then go on Object Transform. And this is going to open the Transform window here, and we're going to use that a lot. So we're going to rotate this by 31 degrees. And now we are going to snap this, and it's actually going to snap to exactly that point, so it's going to be perfect. And then I'm going to duplicate another time, and this time I'm going to rotate by 72 degrees. And now I kind of want to construct a triangle, which is going to be the base triangle. So for that I'm just going to use guides just by making a click and pulling you you add a guide which is just going to be something that you can snap to so that you get exact precision. This tool here you can use to move the points that you you add to these busy um, curves and I'm just going to select it so that I can kind of see the points. You can see these two points but before that I'm going to um, move this guy just by clicking and then dragging uh, so that this intersection of these two lines is exactly the intersection of those two guides. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag that to the intersection. Now I, I'm aware that this means that perhaps the angle isn't exactly perfect anymore but this is a fast and easy way of getting it just right. And we're going to do the same thing right down here and then we're going to shorten this and that. So now we have a, a base triangle and this part right here actually I think we're going to change the color because this is going to be a different direction, like this would be perhaps a mountain fold and these two would be valley folds. So now that we have a base triangle, we're just going to group it 
so that we can't disconnect it anymore, at least not um, uh, un unless we actually want to. And then we're going to duplicate that so that we have a copy and we can close this fill in stroke window again and we're going to rotate it by 10 degrees and then we're going to align it so that this bottom point is exactly again snapped to that intersection of the guides. Now we want to add another crease line between these two top points and for that again I'm just going to add guides. Just zooming in to get quite good precision here. I'm going to select this so that I can see the point and then drag guides to get exactly that point. So with that in place I can zoom out a bit again and then I can draw a line between those two points. Now we want to also have that line back down there so we're going to duplicate it and remember that this triangle we rotated by 10 degrees so to get this one to the right angle we're going to rotate it back 10 degrees and then we can align it to that point zoom in a bit and again I'm going to use a guide to get exact precision here to connect these two points. So for that again just pull in a guide, pull in another guide and then draw the line in between. There we go. So now we have two base triangles and the connection which this is actually going to be the base for the next iteration. But first this has a parameter 5 so we need 5 base triangles next to each other. So I'm just going to duplicate both actually and then I'm going to rotate it by 20 degrees because I want to add it here and this will be rotated by 10 degrees, the next one needs to be rotated by another 10 degrees, so by just you know taking two at the same time I need to rotate by 20 degrees to get the right angle. Now this one needs to be aligned with that point and again to get good precision I'm just going to add some guides. I absolutely love working with guides because they make it easy to snap things into place. So we've got that then we're simply going to select all of these lines and snap them into place. And we need one further one, so we're just going to duplicate one of these, pull it a bit out of place so that we can see whether we got everything. We didn't get this one line, but I don't care about that because it's actually already attached. So rotate it by 10 degrees again this time and now we need to align it with that point so again I'm going to add some guides to get nice precision. Especially for this first set you really do want to work quite precisely because then you can just copy it over and over and it's going to be just perfect and the errors won't uh, won't add up because you know there's no errors, only very minimal errors, um, it's going to be okay. Just select all of that and again put that into place. So now we've got the first iteration done and we want to add these but they need to be scaled down. And you could kind of do this with trial and error but I actually figured it's easier to uh, calculate <laughs> what the uh, actual scaling factor is and one easy way of doing is, is to actually, um, let's see, let's ungroup this for a bit and um, huh, duplicate it. Um, this actually got attached together so I'm just going to delete this node with a delete so I only have that left and I uh, want to do two things actually. The first is I want to know how, by how much I need to rotate this so that it can lie on top and then how much smaller it has to be. So for the scaling factor I need to actually know 
what the angle is so that I can do the right calculation. So first we're going to look at the angle and this is not the only way for sure but it's it's a way I found to be quite easy. So I'm going to zoom in quite far and I want the angle of this of this line here. So I just added a node here again and I'm, I'm just putting my mouse key exactly on that grid intersection and then in the bottom you can see it says it has an angle of 3.5 degrees. Right down here you'll see 3.5 degrees. So that helps. So let's say 3.5 degrees and I'm pressing this key just to exit that node drawing. So to get this line, which is a duplication of that one, so it also has a degree of three and a half, I just need to rotate it back so that it's in parallel to that line. So I'm doing minus 3.5, apply, and you can see a straight edge, but it has the same length as before. So now I can uh, again take this line and pull a guideline there and now we can calculate and we can check the length of this line and that line and then we have the scaling factor. So this guide should actually be at zero because uh, this is one of the guides I created from the page border. So we don't need to do too many calculations. And this one is at 158.366 and this one is at 180.727. Okay, so now we just need to do a quick calculation. So 158.366 divided by 180.727 is 0 0.87627 and so on. And now we can go back here and we know the scaling factor which I'm just going to enter here, percent it's 87.627 and so on. And we're going to scale proportionately so that both are in the same direction. This one we can delete now, we don't need any more. And now the fun begins. Now we can actually select this, group this to one object. Now we're going to duplicate it and now we need to rotate by 3.5, apply, and scale like that. And then this should fit on there exactly. So we're again going to use snapping, there we go. Then we're going to make a guide go through that point. And this one. Let's see, did we get that right? Not quite, almost. There we go. Then we're going to select this, duplicate, pull it up, uh, apply the scaling and the rotation, doesn't matter in which order you do it, and then cusp. There we go. And now you repeat that process, or you can also save some work by um, duplicating all three at the same time and then adding them on top. So let's just quickly again add a guide. We don't need this one actually anymore, so I'm just going to drag that into place. Let's see, we want to get exactly that point here. Drag it into place, drag it into place. And then I'm going to use three, duplicate them. Now we need to apply the rotation three times and scaling three times and then again we can pop it into place. And indeed you can use even more so again let's get a guide to this point right here and let's just put that into place. And now we've got six already, so let's uh, duplicate, let's pull that out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can again put that into place. And now, depending on how many iterations you want, you have, uh, you know, a couple more repetitions to do. I'm just going to press this vertical line to remove the guides. You can toggle that, or you can actually do view uh, guides. There you go. I'm going to also want to scale this for printing, so I'm going to go back to the document properties and again show the page border and perhaps the page a shadow and then select everything and then uh, while keeping the control key pressed I'm going to scale so that the proportions um, are going to stay the same then just drag that into place and then print it out so this was just a quick tutorial on how to draw the crease patterns described in the book Spiral Origami Art Design by Tomoko Fuse using Inkscape. Hope it helps and happy folding!